So Amazon just finished announcing a whole slew of new products. Some are refreshed, some are brand new, and then a whole bunch of new services as well that goes along with the Alexa and Echo lineup. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. I'm Jason Cipriani with Jason Furlow. This is Jason Square. All right, Jason, so what did Amazon announce today that's maybe new, but also just a refresh? Uh, Jason, we got so many notes on this stuff that like it could take us an hour to get through all this junk that Amazon announced today. And we weren't even at the event. We're just going by what we saw on Twitter and other people's blogs. So we have uh, a bunch of refresh products. Uh, there's a new Echo Show, um, eight inch, um, that's $129. There's a new Eero uh, mesh networking setup that's supposedly easier to set up. It's 99 bucks. There's a new Echo Dot that's got a built-in clock on it that's 60 bucks. There's a new Echo, which looks just like the Echo Plus that's wrapped in cloth and you can order it for $99. Um, there's also a new Alexa Smart Oven, which is $250. So that's just the stuff that's just refreshed, right? Just, just a, a, a revamp of the existing products they have in their lineup. Now, there was a bunch of new things that, they, that are completely brand new products that we've never seen before. Um, there's something called an Echo Flex, which is kind of like a smart plug, but it's, but it's got Echo built into it with a built-in uh, speaker and microphone and a little LED light and it, and this wireless accessories it can talk to. Yeah, it kind of looks like one of the plug-in yeah. things that you would recharge batteries in. It's very small, has two speakers built into it and just goes right into your outlet. It adds an Alexa anywhere in your house. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I could put one, I could put in an Echo in every single bathroom now. Fantastic, right? <laughs> well, with the, with the nightlight, it makes a ton of sense. Yes, it does. Um, so there's also uh, what I think is actually the most exciting thing I heard about uh, was the Echo Buds, which are sound like they're AirPod killers, essentially, because they've got Alexa built into the earphones, right? They're wireless earbuds like the AirPods. Uh, five hours of battery life with dual armature drivers, uh, 20 hours with the charging case, Bose noise reduction, again, Alexa built in. Only $129. That's killer. Absolutely killer. Especially if they sound good. Yeah, I agree completely. And you know, the benefit here is that the Echo Buds have built in noise cancellation, which the AirPods are not cancellation, they're noise isolating. It, and that technology is taken from Bose. The AirPods do not have that. So that means, you know, when you're on a long flight, it's going to drown out that humming noise of the engine and hopefully that crying baby a few aisles over as well. And at $129, that, that's a killer price. The Samsung Galaxy Buds have similar technology, but the noise cancellation was, eh, it was all right. So it'll be interesting to see how well Amazon did with Echo Buds. And we'd heard, you know, rumors leading up to this that they were doing truly wireless earbuds. Um, one thing they didn't have, or at least didn't announce today, was that they have any sort of health tracking or fitness aspect to them. None and of that, those things. Yeah, and I think Bloomberg um, had reported previously that they would be able to, you know, track your heart rate and count your steps and you'd use them more as a workout accessory instead of just listening to music, but I think they're kind of taking it slow. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think Amazon is kind of in the same space Microsoft is right now, is that they are accessorizing for other people's, you know, mobile operating system ecosystems, right? So like, I mean, Amazon has not jumped back into the smartwatch sort of, you know, field. Um, they never had a smartwatch, but they did have a cell phone at one point, which failed and, uh, you know, they never went back into there. So it's interesting to see how they are, they're sort of extending other people's ecosystems, right? Just in the same that Microsoft has the Surface headphones for iOS and Android. Um, and they, this is what Amazon is also doing for those mobile devices as well. Yeah, from what I read real, real quickly about the Echo Buds is you're able to long press on the, the touchpad that's on the side of them or, you know, the part that's in your ear and actually interact with Google Assistant or Siri. So there's no platform specific aspect to the Echo Buds. They're going to work with iOS or Android or whatever platform it is you use. Um, and that's another interesting topic in and of itself in, in the fact that Amazon's really experimenting with hardware. Another thing they announced today is called the Day One Initiative. And basically what they're doing is they're taking hardware that's been in their lab that they've been working on and kind of experimenting with and they're releasing it in an invite only program where someone who wants to pay a little bit of money to more or less be a beta tester and provide feedback can do so. And today they announced two products that go into or enter the day one initiative. And the first one was a pair of smart eyeglasses. 
The second one was a ring you wear on, you know, your hand. And both of them have speakers and microphones and Alexa built into them. So with the glasses as a four microphone array or speaker array that actually projects the sound to your ears so no one around you can hear and you could give Alexa a command. Um, and then the ring has two microphones and a small speaker in it as well as a button on it that you could activate Alexa with and you actually hold it up to your ear, listen to Alexa talk back to you. And then, uh, you know, you can interact with it. What do you think about the day one initiative, specifically those two products? Yeah, so I mean, you know, Amazon has had this secret lab that they've had all the time that for a while that they started to create the all the Alexa and the Echo products. Now, you know, we're effectively getting, you know, beta test equipment released into the wild, which I think is interesting as long as it, this stuff is price competitive. You know, I don't mind if it's buggy or if it's half baked as long as it's, you know, um, you know, as long as it's not ridiculously expensive, you know, when we got, when we saw the stuff with Project Glass from Google, you know, it was this ridiculously expensive project that, uh, you know, we ended up being beta testers for. So these things aren't that expensive. It's not bad. Uh, the, for example, if you look at uh, the, uh, the first day one admission product is the frames, right, which are these glasses, you know, with built in uh, Amazon Alexa and speakers. So essentially you can, you can privately talk to Alexa, uh, you know, without anybody hearing you, which is, which is kind of cool. Um, I would imagine that over time as they continue to develop this product, it might even have things like AR and, and other things that they, they could potentially do. Perhaps even use them as kind of like bionic ears, you know, using the, uh, the sensors of your Alexa products around you to enhance your hearing. That, that would be really wild, especially for people with, disab with hearing disabilities. Um, there's some other stuff that they're releasing with this as well. So they also have release, release as part of this day one project, this thing called the loop, which is essentially this ring that you put on your finger, kind of similar to the motive ring, which is a health tracker, but this is actually uh, Alexa on a ring with a microphone. So literally you can talk to Alexa uh, and it also has uh, not just a micro, but also a speaker. So you can touch the ring and then listen to it and talk to it, which is kind of this weird sort of, you know, James Bondy kind of a thing, I guess. Yeah, I dig um, it. I, I don't know if I'd wear one, but I, I definitely like the idea. I have to assume that it's a Bluetooth device and it talks to a mobile, it uses a mobile device for its connectivity. I can't imagine it having Wi-Fi built into this tiny little ring, but I mean, who knows what they can do no, these days. Both of them, both the, the eyeglasses and Loop uh, work with Android phones. The Loop, or the eyeglasses specifically say they only are compatible with Android devices because they'll actually play incoming messages in your, you know, in the stems of the glasses. The Loop doesn't specify, but it only mentions Google Assistant compatibility. So I'm going to assume Android only as well. Google Assistant compatibility? Not, yeah. Not, that's yeah. interesting. The glasses as well. The glasses will work with Google Assistant. Both of them, of course, have Alexa built in. But, you know, any Bluetooth device paired to an Android phone, if you long press on it, it's going to bring up Google Assistant. So I think they're just leveraging that built-in functionality for Android. Yeah. So those, those I think, are like the, the, the main things that we saw as far as hardware that's like super interesting. There's a lot of like little other little devices. They had this new ornament this called the, the echo glow which is essentially a christmas light with different colors it's kind of like what the what phillips did with some of their products but this yeah. is going to be you know does it have alexa built into it or is it just it's just a light i don't, I, I couldn't determine exactly i what believe it it's just a light you could press and mess around with I, probably something to you know entertain kids in their beds at night um and give them a little bit of light i it's what thirty dollars they're going to sell a ton of them uh regardless of whether or not it has a I'm going to buy eight of them and use it as a menorah for Hanukkah, Jason. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So just to close the loop on loop and the eyeglasses for that matter, the uh, glasses themselves are $179. You can request an invite now, but invites won't go out till the end of the year. Loop is $129. Same thing. Request an invite now. Invites don't go out till later in the year. I don't know what qualifications are, you know, part of that invite process, but hopefully a few of us get our hands on some of these products and can test them out. I personally think it's great that Amazon is taking products outside of the lab and getting real world feedback. It's your point. What we saw with Google Glass is exactly why. You know, it sounded great in a lab. And of course, they could walk around Google campus wearing them and not see, you know, a lot of blowback. But once people started wearing them in the work, real world, holy cow, glass holes everywhere, right? So um, 
I, I'm looking forward to seeing what else comes out of Amazon's day one edition initiative. I think it's really exciting. It's probably the most exciting thing for me that they announced today. Um, and yeah, I mean, there was so much hardware. I mean, we, we were, we're kind of leaving a few things out because we don't have enough time. There was a pet tracker, which kind of looks like it's a, a, a tile type thing that we thought that Apple was going to release yeah. uh, for iPhone this year. They never did. Um, could be coming down the road, but it looks like Amazon is taking some, you know, initial steps to sort of uh, to have those. Um, what I thought was also interesting was not so much the stuff that you can buy, but the stuff that we're just going to get as default services as upgrades to our existing stuff, um, which is very interesting. You have the home mode, which I think is which is to be very good for us to have. Well, and that's a privacy mode as well. So you know, when you the idea is when you get home and let's say you have Ring cameras, which Amazon owns Ring, the doorbell and, and security camera company. When you get home your phone will detect that you're within that geofence and it will automatically turn off those cameras and quit recording audio. The Amazon's cloud cam does that already. When I'm home, I don't get any alerts, camera's not on. As soon as I leave, it starts recording. And so I think expanding that out to not only Ring products, but the Echoes and the Alexas and all the other stuff that they have, you know, that we have in our homes is a, is a great privacy feature. It provides peace of mind that you're not always being recorded. Yeah, and there's a couple other things that that, that are that I'm I'm happy that they're doing such as auto deletions of um, of cloud-based recorded uh, content because as you know the Alexa is always listening to us, always recording, and I'm always concerned about the kind of stuff that's sitting in AWS that who knows is reviewing it you know years later. Yeah, um, it's going to be automatically deleted in rolling three and eighteen month intervals, which I think is that gives me some peace of mind. Yeah, it's a it's an opt-in feature. So if you want that peace of mind, you could say delete my recordings every three months. Google provides a similar feature for deleting your location history um, and voice recordings for that matter. So I think Amazon was playing a little bit of catch up there, but it's great to see them do it. And, and I appreciate it as well. And they did kick off their event talking about privacy very strongly, which I, I think after the last few months of human reviewing uh, recordings and everything was a good point for them to make. But you know, you, at the end of the day, we still have these devices with microphones that are always on, always listening. So there's still gonna be that hurdle um, of, and comfort level that uh, consumers will have to get over. And doing things like the auto delete is, is definitely does that. Speaking of human interface type stuff, I'm, I'm looking forward to the fact that uh, Alexa is gonna sound more human, kind of like what they did with Siri with uh, neural text-to-speech, so you'll get to have this more natural sounding voices coming up, including celebrity voices such as Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, you know? yeah, you can actually pay for these voices, and that's what your Alexa Sound fonts, was. yeah, voice yeah. fonts. It's a dollar per celebrity voice, which is kind of funny that Amazon is turning a revenue stream out of Alexa voices, you know, but whatever, 99 cents a pop, I'm sure they're going to sell like crazy, especially if you get someone with Samuel L. Jackson's voice giving you a little bit of attitude when you're interacting with Alexa. Do you and think there it'll, another it'll, it'll include all his curse words as well, or, or just do you think it'll be toning him down a bit? I hope they bleep him out. I mean, that'd be hilarious to you know, yeah. give you like an edited option. That'd be great. Um, but there's also a frustration Alexa feature as well, Jason. Yes. Yeah, so it's like you're, you're annoyed with Alexa. So like if I say like, Alexa, will you shut the leap up or whatever it'll automatically know or at least you'll know from the tone of your voice that you're getting annoyed with it i, I believe is, is is what the thrust of it is you know so yeah, and, and in the different. demo they did on stage i think alexa just kept apologizing you know you get frustrated i tell alexa i hate you all the time when she doesn't understand and uh now she'll reply with i'm sorry or something like that so you know, i think little things like that to make the interaction more personable and more realistic you know with an actual human being um, hey, I'm, I'm all for it, Alexa Guard. So how this works now is you arm it when you leave your house. If it hears glass breaking, um, it will, it'll let you know that, hey, the Alexa in your living room or the Echo in your living room heard glass break. Someone's breaking into your house. Well, Guard will now listen for footsteps. It'll listen for uh, people talking, and then it'll send you an alert and say, hey, by the way, we think someone's in your house, we're here talking. Um, so I think that's kind of creepy. But at the same time, kind of cool for people who don't want to spend money every month on a, an alarm system. And it, yep. you have to specifically activate it. Cool. I mean, I, I think that, you know, this is, uh, there was so much stuff that was announced today that it, it's, it's really hard for us to go through all this stuff. But very clearly, Amazon is very aggressive in this space now of introducing lots of new device hardware, 
trying to get Alexa into literally everything, to get their tendrils into everything. Now, of course, that would make me nervous if it was Facebook. Um, and, you know, I, I, obviously Apple is kind of doing the same thing, right? So it's really a question of which of these large ecosystems do you want to jump in bed with? Um, I'm already a big Amazon customer, and as long as the stuff is affordable and it isn't, you know, totally intrusive into my life, um, it enhances my experience in my home. Um, I'm all for it personally. So, yeah, I agree with you. And we we didn't cover half of what Amazon announced today. There was a lot left there to cover, but we're out of time. And uh, you can check out the rest of the coverage from the Amazon event on ZDNet.com. I'm Jason Cipriani. And I'm Jason Perlow. Thanks for watching Jason Square. Thank you.